Hey, how's it going fight fans? Welcome to Mindful Combat. If you're new to the channel, my name's Rohan, and this is my platform where I do fight sports related content. If you're new here, why don't you help me grow my platform? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, and maybe hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. With that said, remember, it doesn't cost you nothing and it'll help me reach personal goals. I'm trying to hit 2K here and I need your support to be able to do it. If you're a long-term subscriber or if you're new here, either you know subscribe to the channel or maybe share it out with some of your friends who might be interested in mma or something help me get there this is all of our platform so i'm relying on you guys to help me guys anyways this is a video that's kind of bittersweet for me because i'm so excited to see the return of anderson silva and i'm hoping that this is the last fight in the career of anderson silva but at the same time it comes with the recognition that the legendary anderson silva will fight no more and at 45 years old i think it's really important to me that he doesn't fight no more because I don't really need to see him getting beaten up by the young bucks of the game coming up. I don't really need to see him fighting guys that are just going to take him down, maul him. Look, he's 45 years old. His body's not what it used to be. He's had some horrific injuries. His legacy is cemented. Yes, there's been the controversies with him testing positive for steroids, etc. But you know what? That's all in the past. It is what it is now. His legacy is what it is. And he fought in a time where I think... Most everyone would have probably been on something. So, you know, I don't take too much away from his legacy, although I don't count him in my all-time greats because I dismiss anyone who's tested positive. But that's my personal criteria. I'm still a huge Anderson Silva fan, and he fights Uriah Hall, who's an explosive, dynamic fighter who might finally be coming into his own and realising some of the potential that, you know, we as fans have always known he has. So without further ado, let me go into this fight and let's break it down. Uriah Hall is 36 years old. And while he's no spring chicken, he's nine years younger than the 45-year-old Anderson Silva. He's also been more active. Anderson Silva's been injured. He's been off. He got injured against Jared Cannonier. Anderson Silva's one and six in his last seven. It's not really been a good time for Anderson Silva, whereas Jorah Hall comes into this fight riding a three wins and one loss momentum streak, rides two fight win streak, younger. And he's been um, a little more active in recent years. So that's very important to note. Uriah Hall comes into this fight with a professional record of 15 and 9, Anderson Silva is 34 and 10. Now whilst there's a vast difference in experience, I don't think that's going to really play out in this fight because Uriah Hall himself is a grizzled veteran at this point, he's 36 years old, he's had 24 professional fights, he's been in UFC for a while, he's had his ups and downs himself, so experience shouldn't be a factor. Uriah Hall stands at 6 foot tall, which actually makes him 2 inches tall, or shorter than the 6 foot 2 Anderson Silva. Um, so Anderson Silva's going to have a 2-inch high, height advantage, but what Uriah Hall will enjoy is a 2-inch reach advantage with a 79.5-inch reach, whereas Anderson Silva has a 77.5-inch reach, and I think that's going to bear witnessing, especially bearing that these are two fighters that are going to strike. This is going to be a fight that's handled on the beat. It's a really fun fight stylistically. It's the best fight for Anderson Silva to, to retire right on because it will show the best of the skills that he has remaining at this point in time, so it should be a lot of fun. To describe their styles, I think... Uriah Hall, yeah, he's a striker, but he's a very explosive, dynamic striker. He likes to explode into his strikes. He's got good spinning back attacks, and he's got a good all-round game, really. He's got a good jab. I think he's a good striker, and he is very susceptible to be hit. I think he struggles on the back foot, and he struggles when people rush in on him. But Anderson Silva's not necessarily the guy to do that, so it'll be interesting to see how stylistically this plays out. Anderson Silva is, of course, also a striker. He's got that Muay Thai background. He's got great kicks, great knees, great elbows, great boxing. Yeah, at one time was talking about wanting to box Roy Jones Jr. Maybe that will still happen. You never know. This is 2020, the wildest things ever happened. Roy Jones is boxing Mike Tyson, for example. So, yeah, I've done a breakdown of that. So, if you ain't seen it, just check it out. But, yeah, so Anderson Silva, we all know who Anderson Silva is. We know what he's about. We know his game. So, there ain't really too much for me to say here. But let's talk about some of the key wins. Now, whilst um, Uriah Hall hasn't necessarily achieved the potential that we as fans thought he would when he was on the Ultimate Fighter, he has got some good wins over the likes of Thiago Santos. He um, he beat Thiago Santos in a real tough fight. He beat Gegard Kinsasi in an incredible win. And Gegard's a guy who I think an incredible amount of. He's beaten Christoph Jotko. Christoph Jotko goes a very talented fighter. And of course, he's beaten Antonio Carlos Jr. in his most recent fight. For Anson Silva, he's beaten the likes of... Uh, you know, Rich Franklin not once but twice, he's beaten Dan Henderson, Chel Sonnen not once but twice, he's beaten Forrest Griffin, he's beaten really a who's who of mixed martial arts and most recently he's beaten Derek Brunson, not to mention he beat the undefeated and undisputed Chel Sonnen not once but twice. So, so that's a great resume for Anderson Silva to have and both of these guys are really going to put it on the line, I think it's going to be an important fight for both men. The biggest issue for Uriah Hall I think is going to be his mental lapses that he has in the biggest fights. He seems to crumble in the biggest opportunities that he gets. He fumbles and 
this is going to be a big opportunity a main event against Anton Silva how does he handle it the biggest issue for Anton Silva is going to be his age and the wear and tear that he's taken on his body he's been battered he's got a bad leg he's been injured we've seen him injured multiple times he's 45 years old he's coming in one and seven there's loads of negative stuff that we can say about Anton Silva coming into this so it's important for us to remember what version of Anton Silva that we're getting the X Factor for Uriah Hall is going to be his youth or relative youth to Anton Silva and his explosiveness in this game that he doesn't seem to have lost the X Factor for Anton Silva is going to be his experience let's get into the prediction if this was five years ago 10 years ago of course but if this was five years ago and Anton Silva was 40 years old I would pick Anton Silva to pick apart Uriah Hall over a five round fight if this was three years ago I might have done that but this is not then, this is 2020 and we have a 45 year old Anderson Silva coming into the fight on the back of a horrible leg injury where he got taken out by Jared Cannonier by a leg kick and Uriah, um, and Uriah Hall comes into this fight riding a 3 and 1 momentum streak and he's still got his faculties intact, he's not beaten down yet, he's experienced himself but he's not as battle worn as Anderson Silva. Stylistically and technically, I pick Anderson Silva. I think Anderson Silva is a better striker and he's a better striker than Yoah Hall will ever hope to be. But then the same could be said about Anderson Silva versus Jared Cannonet. So what's interesting to me in this fight is not whether or not Anderson Silva is the better striker, it's what version of Anderson Silva that we're getting and what Yoah Hall can do to exploit the weaknesses in Anderson Silva's game that exists now as a result of his injuries and his age. I think Uriah Hall's the more explosive dynamic striker at this point in time. Not technically proficient, I'm saying explosive and dynamic, and his youth should ride him through any tough spots. Anson Silva's not the master that he once was. Yes, he has a vast advantage in BJJ, but I don't think he'll ever shoot for a takedown. So that's none and void, really. That's a useless point to mention. I think what's important here is stand up, and on the feet, Uriah Hall is younger, he's more powerful, he's more explosive, and Anderson Silva has proven to be diminished in many ways his chin's diminished he's worn down his body's not the same actually a great retirement fight for Anderson Silva in my opinion would have been a trilogy with Chris Weidman Chris Weidman who himself these days isn't looking you know the best I think it's important to remember that this is a very very different Anderson Silva now so guys there's not really nothing technically I can say about how I see this fight playing out I think Anderson Silva will have some success early keeping some distance as Uriah Hall is tentative and Anderson Silva is a counter striker anyway, so he's not really going to be threatening your Hall early like that. And I think while Anderson Silva is struggling early, um, sorry, while your Hall is getting into the fight early, I think Anderson Silva will have a nice jab, getting a few nice leg kicks, but he'll eat some as well. And I think as the fight wears on and your Hall becomes more confident and he sees that this is not the Anderson Silva that he grew up watching, I don't know if he did grow up watching Anderson Silva, being that he's only nine years younger than him, but. It's not that same Anderson Silva that wants to terrorise the middleweight division. He'll grow in confidence and I think we're going to see Uriah Hall take out Anderson Silva probably around round two or round three. And then hopefully we see Anderson Silva hang it up, be done and enjoy retirement and enjoy the spoils of a legendary career. As a huge fan of Anderson Silva, I really do hope that this is it for him. We don't need to see him get beaten up regularly. So as a big fan, I want to see, I want to see him be done now. Comment below, let me know how you see this fight going. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. And um, stick around for the preview at the end of the video. My comment is put, uh, my editor is putting up, you know, little previews of past videos that we've done. Give you guys a little opportunity to check them out. If you ain't checked them out, then go check it out. We've made it real easy for you. Clickable links, or you can just go on the channel if you're new here and check out all my other stuff as well. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm Rohan, and as always, this is Mind for Combat. Fighters are fighters and you will demonstrate your worth as a fighter by showing me your skill set against your opponents. Now there's tons of credible challenges outside of the UFC. In this video I'll be taking a look at Ong Lan Sang and Angela Lee in particular and there's a couple of reasons why I've chosen them. Uh, firstly is because um, you know they, they are stars, they're stars in uh, one championship. One championship is another major uh, mixed martial arts broadcasting um, promotion. They're, uh, they're stars in their countries, they, they get paid very well by the promotions they fight for and, and you know, uh, more selfishly, they bring this channel a lot of traction. I, I respect everything they've done for this channel in helping me get my uh, voice out there and I most certainly am not going to deny that that's one of the reasons I've chosen to go with them as opposed with, say, Bellator champions. So I'm, I'm being honest here, but, but let's, let's talk about this one. It's an interesting one. So Ong Lan Sang. 
Ong Lan Sang is the current one championship middleweight and light heavyweight champion and he also knocked out the one championship heavyweight champion. So the argument could be made that he kind of rules over three divisions in one championship. I mean he doesn't but he's knocked out the heavyweight champion as well. He's now already 35 years old. He's 35 years old and has a professional mixed martial arts record of 27 wins and 10 losses. Now, in my opinion, he is one of the top 10 best light heavyweights in the world, maybe even top five light, best light heavyweight in the world. Do I think that he would take out everyone in the UFC? I don't know, I've actually done a video touching on it, so if you haven't already, then check that video out. But it's actually my most viewed video, it got 16K views, well impressed by that. But what you have to question now is Ong Lan Sang. How important is the respect for him that he would get from signing with the UFC? Now, Ong Lan Sang is a superstar. He sells at arenas, he gets paid well, he gets deals, sponsorships, he's well respected in the mixed martial arts community. What does it add to him for him to sign with UFC and be fighting the likes of Glover Teixeira, Anthony Smith, uh, Gustafsson if he comes back, Dominic Reyes, Thiago Santos, John Jones, fighting those guys. What will it add to him? Yes, it will add re names on his resume if he's to beat them. Yes, he could potentially get exposed at 35 years old is it worth it for him to be doing that considering he's so well paid outside of the UFC so now when we're talking about oh yeah but we can't take this man's career seriously when he's not fighting in the UFC or anyone fighting in the not fighting in the UFC should be considered a b-league fighter well hold on a second wasn't Justin Gaethje that b-league fighter fighting in World Series of Fighting that's now he's the interim champion in the UFC's lightweight division and a lot of people are saying he's going to beat Habib Nurmagomedov. What happened when the B-League Strike Force fighters came over to the UFC? So, let's not knock their credentials or abilities, but is it worth it for the fighter? More so, that's what we need to ask. 